Boom. All right, guys, Monday morning, about 7.30 on the East Coast. I've been at it since 5.30. Got to wake up before the dogs wants, wants to get off the couch. That is the rule. Wake up before the dogs want to wake up. <clears throat> Let a couple people roll through. Looks like spring weather is making its way, making its way through the dirty jurors. All right, guys. So here's what I've been thinking about. I've got uh, on my break. I'm going to be going over some video footage for my VIP co uh, clients. <clears throat> Have a VIP coaching program and a nice Lamborghini right here. Nice, nice. And what's really hit me is when I was younger, in my teenage years, I was training at this gym and it closed down. A lot of these mom and pop gyms, they shut down. But when I was 13, 14, 15, I really looked up to a lot of these guys. And <clears throat> then I went, you know, I went to another, I went to Diamond Gym. And I remember in my early 20s, I went back to a gym. Was I even 21? Can't remember. <laughs> my early 20s, I went back to the gym where I really looked up to these guys. And what I saw was <clears throat> these guys were going through the motions. These guys that were once big and strong, they lost it. They became kind of the talkers in the gym. I saw guys reading newspapers in between sets, and um, they didn't even recognize me. I was probably 60 pounds heavier than when I had left, probably gaining, you know, 10 pounds a year, sometimes a little bit more. And I look back, all right, I'm 43, and I look at the adults that we train at my one location in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, and these adults are awesome. They're in great shape. And it's because they're training hard. They're still getting after it. They're obviously not reading newspapers and checking cell phones between sets. Of course, in my one location, we've got our, our guy Mark Rusin, Jiu Jitsu Brown Belt, always checking phone in between sets, but we let him. We, bought it. we say, What are we going to say to you? You're going to, you could like break our arm in five seconds. But the other gym, the guys are lean, the guys are strong men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, early 60s, doing pull-ups, deadlifts, carries. And that is what I love about strength, is it does not discriminate. It doesn't care about your age, the color of your skin, how much money's in your bank account. Strength is for everybody. Everybody who's willing to earn it. Everybody who's willing, who's willing to do the work. And of course, the same holds true for the athletes. The same holds true for the athletes. Sometimes I see the athletes I've trained, and then when they leave us, it's like they, they're like, all right, I'm done with athletics. I'm done training. I'm done getting strong. And then I see them later, and it's heartbreaking because I question myself. How did we not, how did we not make a big enough impact on this athlete? where he's not training beyond sports, beyond athletics, beyond his competitive sport years. A little bit heartbreaking. And I guess it comes down to this. It comes down to the accountability of a coach. For example, I work with my buddy Matt Reynolds. And uh, when he sends me the workout, I'm like, man, I can't believe he's sending me this workout. Like, I struggled with it last time. Like, is this guy trying to kill me? And then I start getting pissed off. And I'm like, I'm going to prove him wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Four sneezes. So the accountability of a coach, it takes your stick to itiveness factor to the 20x level. It's like you don't want to let down the person on the other side. Now, not everybody's like that. I actually recently fired somebody who signed up for the VIP program. The guy did a great, 
interview was fired up to create change in his life. And then once we got started, he bailed after a week or two. And I realized, okay, what would most people do? I'll tell you what a doctor said to me. He said, who cares if he's not, if he's not, you know, communicating and showing up, he's paying you. I go, that's not how I work. I gotta earn that money. I don't want money that somebody is giving me, but they're not showing up. To me, that's called sneaky money, dirty money. So I fired the guy. I want to earn it, and you got to earn it. And if you don't want to help yourself, then I cannot help you. And I've learned that with the athletes I train. If their parents are not highly motivated to help them, I can't help the kid. Um, if it's an adult who's not highly motivated, I cannot help. I cannot help that adult. So before you get helped, you got to be willing to help yourself. I am at a traffic light, guys. So if anybody wants to drop, a quick question. Let it rip, baby. Uh, what questions do you guys have? Could probably get one question before this traffic light changes. All right, what's happening, guys? Good morning. Good morning, baby. All right, guys, clock is ticking. Ask that question, and then I'm out of here. By the way, guys, I have uploaded a lot of new content to the YouTube channel. Happy Monday, my man, Jose. Um, a lot of new content to the YouTube channel. Constantly updating the Instagram both my Z Evanesh and Underground Strength Gym. And those of you that, you know, have questions about the VIP coaching program, the link is in my bio, and you can DM me to set up an interview. Thoughts on high bar or low bar squats? I get it right in the middle of the traps, right in the middle of the traps. Um, I found that most athletes are just not heavily muscled enough in the back in the upper and mid back to even enable them to do good with a low bar back squat. And uh, most athletes are not ready emotionally, psychologically, to be willing and ready to grind out some heavy squats. And that low bar back squat puts them in a scary position with that chest being lower. So when I squat, I'm really focusing on hip drive right now. That's what I've been picking up from my buddy Matt, really getting the butt back, driving up with the hips. Whereas with the athletes, I try to get a little bit more of a vertical posture, still sitting back, but we also do the box squat, which allows them to get the hip drive. So get that bar in the middle of the traps. And of course you gotta build up the traps for these athletes. Shrugs, a lot of upper back and rear delt work, all kinds of carries. Uh, all kinds of band work for the upper back. We do a ton of work to build their upper back. And even then, it's still hard to put muscle on them because if you're not eating, it's gonna be hard to jack up that back. Let's get one more question, guys. One more question. I don't like saying Monday motivation. I like being fired up myself. Back in the US, yes, my brother. Got some good weather here. Do you ever do box squats for sprinters compared to full squats? Oh, half? Um, we utilize the conjugate method. So we box squat. And our box squat is not super low just because we are going back and forth with lots of different heights. So we're usually on a 14 inch box. And um, we don't have too many specialized sprinters. One of our college guys though, comes back every summer, comes back every winter and spring break. He runs the 400 and the 800. So what we will do is timed belt squat work. So let's say his best time on the 400 is 50 seconds. Uh, we're gonna do 50 seconds of belt squats. 
and um, we don't do half squats with him. I honestly feel like as you start getting more advanced, that's when you start doing that. I think people look at Charlie Francis, they say, oh, he trained Ben Johnson with these half squats, that's the way it should be done. I, I don't think there's a big, you know, like, oh, we can't full squat, especially if you're working with a high school athlete. If I was working with an experienced collegiate sprinter, then I'm likely going to be incorporating more of those um, heavier half squats, um, half squats off the pins, things of that nature. Oh, moving from wall handstand to free handstand, what's the best way? Use the. I was just thinking about this. I used to program a ton of handstand push-ups for our athletes, but both of my gyms do not have free space against the wall, and unfortunately, I had to really pull that out. You guys might be saying, "God, Zach, I see that whole wall empty. That is sheetrock separated very thin by maybe a two by four into my neighbor's um, building." And he's got tools hanging up all against the wall. And that guy has some emotional and mental problems. So we keep the wall noise to a minimum. But I'll say this. You start off working with your handstand against the wall. Then you work on bringing your feet against the wall. And just holding it as long as you can. And then when you're about to lose it, go back to the wall and hold. Bring them back up. Try to get a five count. Back to the wall. Five count back to the wall. You're essentially going to do a linear progression with a handstand free hold. Five seconds one week, eight seconds, maybe ten seconds the next week, and so on. And then after three or four weeks, just go without the wall. Simple as that. If you're falling from a handstand, you do a cartwheel to land out of it. So those of you that have been following me for a long time, especially my earliest, my first warehouse, and even in the garage days, all of our guys would warm up on the grass and do cartwheels, forward rolls, dive rolls. I did it all the time, working with Lehigh and Rutgers, warm the guys up on the wrestling mats. Yep, you're doing a round off or a cartwheel to land. So having that gymnastics background, it's just so powerful for any athlete, not just wrestlers. And I, I utilize a lot of the methods of, of the training of wrestlers because I'm building athletes. I'm training athletes for athleticism. A buddy of mine who used to, he used to train at the gym, he became a coach at my gym. Now he's a Division One strength coach. He's like, and he's a track and field coach. He said, um, it, I feel like the training in college setting nowadays is just modified powerlifting. He's like, these kids can't do proper push-ups, they can't do proper pull-ups, but these coaches want them to deadlift and box squat and things before they built the foundation. And he's right. A lot of these athletes cannot move. You could lift heavy weight, but you can't move. You're not an athlete, so not a good sign. Build athleticism. All right, guys, had a good time on this Q&A. The VIP coaching is not just for the adults. If you are an athlete, you're best served with my online programming, the Gladiator program. But if you are parents of an athlete and you want me training your son or daughter from afar, the VIP coaching would be the program for you always playing in trees. See shade of brother. All right, guys, have a great day. Hit me up with a DM questions or to set up your interview for the VIP coaching. Have a great day.